Uh, hello, my name is uh, Stephen Chen. I'm one of the uh, interventional radiologists here at Wolper Hall. And uh, uh, Scott, Scott asked me to uh, do a kind of a nuts and bolts talk on, uh, you know, ultrasound guidance in general. So this is going to be a pretty basic talk, uh, nothing specific about musculoskeletal. And uh, what I found was interesting uh, while I was constructing this talk is um, that there's, there isn't uh, you know, a lot of specific literature on, uh, on ultrasound guidance. A lot of it's taught as a, a hands-on sort of uh, approach. Uh, so uh, obviously ultrasound guidance uh, in, the, in radiology began with uh, you know, venous access for kick lines and central lines. But then, uh, you know, it's also been adopted uh, for breast biopsies, thyroid biopsies, and abscess drainages as well. And uh, even more recently, it's been adopted for nephrostomy access. Uh, you know, in fact, during my fellowship, uh, <clears throat> some of the older staff thought it was crazy to be uh, doing nephrostomy as vulture sound. And uh, colostomy, bile duct access, and, uh, and, and obviously musculoskeletal procedures nowadays. Uh, we've also seen a rapid adoption of ultrasound guided procedures in the uh, emergency department uh, by the anesthesiologist and uh, by PM&R and uh, rheumatologists as well. And, um, you know, uh, fortunate or unfortunate, uh, you know, obviously the ultrasound machines are getting more uh, and more sophisticated. So your imaging is improved and they're getting cheaper as well. So I think it's a little bit inevitable and it's dependent on us to provide the good service and uh, maintain the, uh, you know, uh, you know, referral base from our clinicians by providing good service. Uh, like I was saying, there, there, you know, was not a real handbook on ultrasound techniques. Uh, so I kind of uh, wrote this up over uh, just what the knowledge I've acquired over a couple of years of, uh, of being radiology staff and uh, through my IR fellowship. Skills uh, traditionally have been uh, learned through a uh, kind of see one, do one, teach one fashion. And uh, really, you can write all you want about how you do these procedures. But a large part of this training uh, is uh, training the cerebellum right, rather than training the cerebrum, you know, hand-eye coordination type uh, techniques as we were talking about before. There's an art to using ultrasound guidance. And, uh, you know, a lot of my uh, mentors uh, used to talk about uh, seeing in 3D. You know, the radiologists were best at seeing in 3D, you know. You do cross-sectional imaging like, um, like, what I, like Ryan was talking about. So, you know, since we do a lot of cross-sectional imaging and know the anatomy very well, we're also ideally suited for uh, using ultrasound to image these structures and to uh, do image guide procedures on these structures. So, uh, you know, ultrasound, um, you know, if you really see in 3D, you're, uh, you're just confirming the needle's in the right position. You get the needle started, and then uh, really you don't need to see the needle the whole way because you, in 3D you know exactly where your target is, and uh, you shove the needle there and you confirm that you're in the right position. Kind of like we do with CT biopsies too. You know, if, if you can uh, get your needle initially kind of in the skin and you know where it's pointed, you know, really you just need one additional scan to uh, confirm that your needle's in target if, uh, if, uh, if, if it's a big enough target and you're confident. So uh, in general, there are uh, two uh, ultrasound uh, techniques for uh, needle guidance. Uh, there's a technique I call the longitudinal technique, which I think most of the images today have been shown. Uh, the goal is to show the entire length of the needle uh, along the long axis of the probe. So with this technique, uh, you know, maybe the downside is you, the probe needs to stay perfectly parallel um, to the needle. If, you, uh, if it's torque left or right with respect to the needle, you'll lose the entire trajectory of the needle. And the needle has to stay along the center line of the uh, short axis of the probe for uh, you to maintain uh, needle visualization. One potential disadvantage is uh, you need a longer trajectory, depending on what you're doing. If you're just injecting a, a joint or a bursa, that's really not a disadvantage. But if you're trying to... Uh, place a tube into a structure or a vessel, you know, the uh, position at which you enter the uh, structure might be important. And, uh, you know, if you actually use a needle guide, um, unfortunately it fixes a, uh, a fixed angle on you, uh, which may not be advantageous for what you're trying to do. So just a diagram of, uh, you know, the longitude technique, the, uh, the rectangle is the uh, ultrasound probe and uh, the circle is our, is our target, right? So uh, usually with a longitudinal technique, you want to bring the uh, needle up to the edge of the probe so you can uh, see the needle as soon as you enter the skin. And then uh, you uh, try to visualize the entire length of the needle as you uh, push it into the target. Uh, as uh, Dr. Campbell was saying earlier, you know, the uh, less um, parallel you are to a probe, oftentimes it can be more difficult to see the needle, especially if a patient with a, uh, who is a, a larger body habitus or has a lot of uh, tissue that makes it hard to, uh, echogenic tissue that makes it hard to see needle. 
So uh, with the longitude technique, you can also uh, vary the angle at which uh, the needle enters the skin to uh, help re rectify the situation. Or uh, as, uh, as Scott was showing earlier, you can also change a probe position but uh, to uh, more accurately visualize the needle. There's the uh, so-called transverse technique. And uh, with this technique, uh, you're really trying to dynamically track the tip of the needle. And uh, you know, uh, this is often used for pick line access, for instance. Uh, you start by centering the probe on the target. Then you just you know, determine the desired trajectory length and pick a skin uh, entry site appropri appropriately. And uh, generally, you enter the skin shallowly with the needle at least one centimeter. And uh, why shallow? Again, if, if, you're, uh, if your angle is very shallow, it's easy to see the needle. And then you scan a few millimeters t towards the target and then advance the needle to the new field of view. And then you keep on repeating until your target's in the field of view. So just to kind of diagram, the um, image on the uh, right-hand side of the screen um, is the image of uh, what you actually see, you know, with the transducer uh, on top of the skin, and the, you see the target uh, in short axis below the skin. And then uh, you enter the needle uh, some, uh, some distance away from the transducer, whatever you pick the distance to be. So you enter the skin, and uh, to puncture the skin, you go uh, you know, probably a pretty sharp angle. And then uh, you bring the uh, transducer towards the uh, needle tip until you actually find the needle tip on ultrasound, as you see on the right. And then you move the uh, transducer away from the tip. And then you uh, make the angle of the needle a little more shallow. You push it towards the transducer, so you see the needle tip again. And you start moving the uh, transducer. Or you, can, you can actually angle the transducer instead of moving it as well, but you basically you move it away from the tip of the needle. Then you push the needle into the field of view again. You repeat the process. You keep on repeating the process until you see the target. And then you're just tracking the needle tip until you hit the target. So that's the uh, transverse technique. So uh, again, you know, a shallow angle has the advantage of being more easily seen on ultrasound, especially with the transverse technique. And uh, with a steep angle, it's more easy to see the motion of displaced tissues at the tip of the needle. So you can alternate between uh, steep and shallow angles. So for instance, if you're trying to uh, enter a structure and uh, you... Um, you're at a shallow angle initially, you can see where the needle is. And if you're not at the right depth, you can just change the angle and you can start to see the movement of the uh, structures. And as you, uh, as you start penetrating the structure, you can re uh, readjust your angle uh, to be a shallow angle so you see the tip of the needle again. So, uh, for instance, uh, here, this is you know, a shallow angle where you're more par you know, uh, parallel to the transducer, so you're going to be able to see the needle tip more easily. And then if you, of course, pick a more steep angle, you'll be see, able to see the indentation on the object more easily. Uh, trajectory selection. So uh, often it can be advantageous to judge the distance to the target from the skin by starting with a shallow angle and uh, you find uh, to find the needle tip. So you start very shallow and you, uh, stress, you know, push the needle in uh, very close to the skin. And then uh, you end up with the picture where you, your needle tip is on top of the uh, object you want to get into but you see your needle very easily. Well, then you know your needle is perhaps one, one centimeter or two centimeters above the target. Then uh, you can, in one motion, pull the needle all the way back, and you know exactly how far to go, and adjust your angle in your mind exactly what it needs to get into the target, and just shove it all the way forward you know, without wavering the needle side to side using the transverse uh, technique. Uh, extremely steep or direct prepping your skin trajectories can be taken with the shortest path. Uh, if you uh, you know if you decide to use the uh, transverse technique, and uh, if the target's oblong, the easiest trajectory is obviously along the longest axis. So, uh, what do you have a smaller mobile uh, target? Well, there's a couple uh, techniques that I've uh, heard my colleagues uh, banner around for uh, getting a mobile target. So, you know, if it's uh, like a two millimeter target, a three millimeter target that wants to move around, that you're having a harder time, uh, you know, getting a biopsy from or getting into a two millimeter vessels for sale. So uh, there's a technique that I use called the center line technique, and uh, uh, there's a technique uh, that Dr. Voigt likes to uh, use, and I, I kind of call it the piercing technique. And then uh, there's a, uh, you know, the two wall, the double walk technique, the skewering technique. So uh, the center line technique uh, is uh, used with uh, the transverse approach uh, when you try to enter an object. You try to keep the needle tip in the uh, center of the target and keep on advancing or tracking that tip of the needle so that it stays in the center of the object. You keep on pushing it until you feel uh, the tissue give so that you're actually in the structure that you want to get into. Uh, so you'll feel give or you'll see blood return if you're trying to get into a vessel. Uh, like I said, it can be used to enter a very small two to three millimeter vessels. Um, 
And sometimes uh, you may find that you have to advance the needle uh, up to two or three centimeters along the center of the vessel for the uh, vessel wall to finally give um, in the needle to enter the vessel. So uh, it's kind of a diagram of how that's done. You have the, again, the uh, needle picture, the ultrasound picture on the right hand side and uh, a uh, kind of a overview of where the needle and transducer is on the, on the uh, left hand side of the screen. So you bring this transducer up to uh, where the needle enters. You kind of see the needle, needle enter the, uh, the skin and you see it above the vessel. And then you start tenting the uh, vessel or structure and you see the, you know, that the, uh, the vessel is tented. And it's, it's, uh, it's important to remember that even though it looks like the needle tips in the structure that you're in, it, it may not actually be uh, through the fascia or you know, our connected tissue surrounding the structure. So then you uh, change the angle of your needle so it stays along the center of your structure and you keep on pushing and you move your ultrasound probe to follow the tip of the needle. And you keep on pushing and sometimes uh, you, know, you won't feel the tissue give so you may have to push for a good length of uh, distance along the center line before it actually enters the structure. And you keep on pushing until you feel the pop. And uh, so obviously we've kept the, uh, the needle along the center line of the structure for this, this whole distance while tracking with the ultrasound probe. Um, so piercing techniques, so it can be used both for transverse and longitudinal techniques. Uh, the angle, the needle is placed on the edge of the target or the vessel. And uh, this is what uh, Dr. Voigt here likes talking about, uh, making little short jabs of the needle so you're relying on the uh, sharpness of your needle to, to uh, keep the object from moving away. So you make a uh, sharp jab on the structure or needle, and uh, it can be used as a vascular access technique with the goal of uh, entering only one side of the vessel and rather than uh, piercing the opposite side as well. So kind of a diagram of, uh, of the, uh, this technique. So you kind of tent the uh, vessel, and you go back and forth. You make a quick jab with hope that the... Uh, sharpness, uh, cutting, you know, uh, action of the needle tip will pierce a single wall of the, of the uh, structure rather than going through both walls. So skewing techniques, well, again, it can be used with both transverse and longitudinal techniques, and you advance the needle to the edge of the target. Um, so with this technique, uh, you, you apply a steady pressure on the target, and, uh, you know, uh, at least on the uh, short axis, uh, transverse view, the target may, may, may move left or right, so if the object moves left or right and starts rolling away from the needle tip, you just dynamically adjust it. So you keep the needle tip indented on the structure as it moves left and right, and you just keep, keep on applying pressure to make sure the needle tip is on the center of the structure regardless of where the structure is moving. And then you'll feel it to suddenly pierce and go through the structure through and through on both sides, and then it's very easy once this goes through to find the needle tip again and start pulling the needle tip back, tracking your needle tip again uh, with the techniques that we had talked about before. So again, uh, you have a, a view uh, on the ultrasound on the right hand side and you have the needle tip entering the skin on the uh, left. You can see it entering the skin, you see the little dot uh, right underneath the skin above the structure you want to get into. You start tenting the, uh, the structure. At this point, sometimes uh, the structure may move left or right. So it's uh, dependent on you to actually chase the structure down with the needle tip to make sure it doesn't move away from the tip. You keep on applying pressure until it tends more, and it tends more, and eventually you're through the structure completely. And now the, you know you apply the techniques that you used before in the past to uh, follow the needle tip. And uh, at this point, you can also change the angle of your transducer or change the angle of your needle, so it makes it easier to see the needle tip because you're already through and through. You track your needle tip, and basically you keep on tracking it until you're back in the center of the structure you want to be in, because you know you're definitely through the anterior wall of the uh, structure and uh, you just have to pull it back through the posterior wall. Just uh, we've discussed about different transducer types. Uh, obviously the curved transducer generally are lower frequency, uh, okay, linear transducers, and you have different needle types. Uh, I don't know how many people here are using echogenic needles, and you have non-echogenic needles as well. Linear probe is off a higher frequency, provides higher resolution pictures. The advantage of using linear probe is uh, the change in the angle of your needle on the screen will, will, vary, will uh, vary linearly with the change of the angle that you actually see uh, the angle above the skin. So you have to remember, uh, if you're not using a linear probe, the angle you see on the, uh, on the screen is not, doesn't, doesn't vary linearly with how much you actually change the angle of the needle in your, uh, in your hand. So uh, it's probably a little more important to have direct visualization of, uh, of the shaft of the needle when you're using a, a curved transducer, because it's harder to judge how much you have to adjust the angle. 
actually echogenic coatings on the needles. Uh, you know, they make these echogenic coatings now uh, are basically rough surfaces on the needle that capture small pockets of air to allow for e e easier visualization of ultrasound. The uh, unfortunate uh, property of having an echogenic needle is if the echogenic uh, coating goes all the way to the tip of the needle, oftentimes the uh, sharpness of the tip uh, is not as great as if you had a non-echogenic tip. So for that reason, some people prefer using non-echogenic needles entirely. However, the manufacturers also produce needles that have partially echogenic tips, where the very you know front end of the needle is not coated to uh, increase the sharpness of the needle tip. And then uh, the uh, you know two three millimeters back along the shaft, there's the echogenic coating to uh, make the needle a little bit more easy to see. So you have hybrid needles that have partial echogenic coating as well. And that's it for my uh, kind of uh, nuts and bolts talk on uh, how to uh, do ultrasound guidance.